Okay, so let's get started. I'm in my fire directory, which is where I put all of my projects. Um, and we're going to run that Laravel new paparazzi command line. And the first thing we're going to do is initialize a GitHub repository for that project. So we are going to go to GitHub and create a new repository, paparazzi. I'm going to make it private, no initialization, create. OK. So now we're going to use this to initialize our repository. So um, there is already quite a lot of things in this folder. Um, all the things that Laravel has initialized for us. So we're going to do a git init and then git add all. Then we run git commit and finally we need to push that to GitHub. And the way we do that is to add this remote provided by GitHub. And then all that's left to do is to push to master. OK, so now if we go back to GitHub and we refresh that page, everything is being committed properly. So now we're going to use the rest of this episode to remove any dependencies we're not going to use and prepare our local environment a little bit. So um, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to be using hot reloading a lot, which is when your front end just reloads automatically without you having to refresh the page. So that's going to be very handy when we uh, design our front end using Tailwind CSS. And in order for me to do that, there are a couple of things that we need to do. So let's start by opening our code editor and go on the git ignore. And we're going to need to add public slash mix manifest that JSON. And that's just because whenever you have a hot reload, it will add a new line on that mix manifest. So you kind of end up having to always commit a new version of that file, which is a little bit unnecessary. And on the package.json, we're going to add an option on the hot script, which is disable host check. And that's necessary because otherwise we have a bunch of unnecessary errors in our consoles. And when I'm going to be showcasing some front end design, it's better not to have those console errors all the time. OK, so then on the M file, we're going to rename our app paparazzi. Hey, this is paparazzi.wip. And we'll take care of the database a bit later. Next, we're going to go back to our package.json and have a look at the dependencies. So as you can see, Vue.js is actually not there anymore by default. And that's because from Laravel 6, it has been removed from the default application. So to add it back, we've got to add it as a preset. Um, so let's do that. So we have to do composer require. And by the way, I do have an alias for that. And I have an alias for quite a lot of things. So I'm going to try my best uh, to at least introduce them when I use them for the first time. So composer require will just be CR. CR Laravel slash UI. And now we can add the view presets. So we do that by running PHP artisan. Again, I've got an alias for that, which is quite simply A, so PHP artisan UI view, and that will set us up with Vue.js like it was before. Okay, so that was pretty quick actually. So now we need to run npm install. Uh, I've got a shortcut for that, which is just ni. And then, and finally, we can compile our assets using npn run dev. OK, so that's us kind of back to normal. 
Uh, now let's have a look at what we can actually remove. Uh, for example, I can see jQuery here, which is just, yeah, nope. Uh, Lodash, we're going to try our best to do without because with ES6, you can actually do quite a lot of things that Lodash can do without having to add this really big library. Next, we're going to use Tailwind CSS so we can say goodbye to Bootstrap. And popper.js is actually just a dependency of Bootstrap, so we can remove that as well. We won't be using SAS um, since we'll try our best not to write any custom CSS um, thanks to Tailwind CSS again. So let's remove those two. And I think that's it. So now obviously we've removed a bunch of dependencies, so we've got to replicate those changes in the GS folder. So bootstrap.js, there you go. We don't need Lodash anymore. We don't need jQuery, Popper, or Bootstrap, so we can remove all that entirely. Uh, we'll keep Axios. And we won't be using Laravel Echo, so we can just remove those comments. Next, we need to clean our app.js file. Um, so we will require the bootstrap that we've just cleaned. Then a view, I prefer importing it through this notation. Then we won't need that example component at all. And then we can start the app. Nice and simple. Speaking of useless component, we can actually delete that just now. We can also remove that SAS folder here since we won't be using SAS at all. Okay, so I think we're almost ready to wrap this video. The last thing I'd like to do though is check our Webpack configurations. Um, so yeah, at the moment it's trying to find an app.scss and I've just removed the entire SCSS folder. So let's create a, let's go to resource and create a CSS slash app. CSS file, and we'll just leave it empty for now. So back in the Webpack configuration, we can change SAS to CSS, and that's fixed. Next, we're going to define some Webpack aliases. So when I write my front ends, I like using aliases for each folder that I have under the JS uh, folder. So for example, here I've got components, and therefore I like to have an at component alias so that I don't actually have to remember, oh, is that component in the same directory? In that case, in that case I use one dot, uh, or is it in the parent directory? In that case, I use two dots, etc., etc. So let's do that now. So it's ready for us later. Webpack config. Okay, and the first alias we're going to create um, is at components and it's going to link to our components folder. And finally, before we wrap up, I want to disable the success notifications because when we're going to use um, hot reloading, it's going to drive us nuts if we have a pop-up that says success every five seconds. And something that I add to almost all of my project is uh, versioning for production environments and source maps for dev environments. So versioning in production will make sure that you don't have to do a refresh whilst having the console open on your browser for it to actually refresh. So it will kind of invalidate the cache by kind of always changing the name of your JavaScript and CSS compiled files. Um, and when we're not in production, we do one source maps just so that when we debug something in the console, we can actually see our code as we are writing it instead of just seeing a compiled version of it. So I know setting up all of this can be a little bit much uh, sometimes. So let's just open our project uh, on a different environment to kind of have a clear view of what we've actually done aside from Laravel new paparazzi. So I'm gonna use the GitHub desktop application um, and add our project in there. Uh, 
So as you can see, we've basically added a new PHP dependency called Laravel UI, which enabled us to get started very quickly with uh, Vue.js. Next, we updated some front-end dependency by obviously adding Vue.js, but also removing other dependencies like Lodash or SAS. Um, we then cleaned our app.js file and our bootstrap.js file to reflect those changes. And we've updated our Webpack configuration to have aliases, disable notification, versioning, and source maps.